Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of The Parts Bin. All right, guys, it's been a little while since we've done an episode of The Parts Bin here. Um, I'm actually really, really excited about this particular episode. This one we've been working on a long time. And this is a economical option for a head fastener upgrade. There's lots of different options now on how to tighten your head down on your engine, head studs, variants of head studs, head bolts. And this is something that Tony actually kind of spearheaded. He actually used these in the past and he wanted to like upgrade these. I'm gonna let Tony talk for a minute, I'll probably interject, but these are an awesome head bolt. It's not a head stud, it's a head bolt. We're gonna tell you why this is actually a pretty good option if you're not making crazy power and compound turbos are not in your future. So Tony, kind of spill your guts, get geeky on us, tell us what's going on here. All right, so this all started, I mean, these, these are, for all intents and purposes, very standard, very boring 12.9 socket head cap screws. Um, these have been floating around on the internet on forums for a long time. They're, they're nothing new and special, like the concept is not. I personally ran a set of bolts like this on my personal truck uh, for about four or five years, making about 500 horsepower. Um, and I, they, were, they were actually holding down um, my 320,000 mile head gasket with 20 degrees of timing. And for, it just took like a champ. Yeah, took it like a champ you know, 525-ish horsepower or so, and it did that for years on my daily driver. When we had um, Oscar here, do you remember Oscar? That was, we had an old nasty truck. That was before my time here. Yeah, but, it might have yeah. been before your time. So we had an old truck that we ran head bolts on. We took that thing up with a 369, and um, we, I think we took that to like 600 horsepower. Mm -hmm. Then we strapped on compounds, the second run of blue head gasket. Compounds make a lot of torque. Torque is what kills head gaskets. So like I say, if you're really just gonna be a single turbo guy, you can make a lot of power without spending a ton of money on head fasteners, just like you did, years, yeah. and it worked great. Yeah, and that was my daily driver. I was putting 20,000 miles a year on it. So when I say it's reliable, like, I, be I believe it. I mean that, I stand by that. Um, so one thing that we wanted to do was, pretty much what I did was I just went to fasten all or McMaster car or somewhere and just got the bolts. And the trouble that I had with them is that there isn't a washer out there that like fits them well. So I, I had a lathe at my house, so I just made washers and figured it out. Um, so what's wrong with the washers? Why, why, why do you need to do that through lathe? What happens? So the, the, the closest sized washers, they fit too loose. They don't support the head of the fastener very well. And they're also too large on the outside diameter. So on the on a 12 valve engine, between the valve covers, you've got a row of these things. And the if you use regular off the shelf M12 washers, they'll actually cut the gaskets on the valve covers. Um, so you have a nasty oil leak. Yeah. So you put it all back together, and then about a week later, you get an oil leak. And ask me why I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so hence the lathe, you had to fix your own washers. Yeah. So. Um, the other thing was that the black oxide surface finish you typically see on a 12.9 fastener is garbage. Um, I used to live in, in Washington State, um, you know, very humid up there, uh, very volatile humidity as well. Some days it would be 20%, some, day it'd be, some days it would be 90. And after three months or so, um, they just were rusty and gross looking. And I never had a problem with them failing because of that. but it was always one of those like, well, you know. It's ugly. It's ugly and, you know, it kind of Works, makes you lose faith in it. Yeah. You know, so um, so we fixed both of those things. Um, we actually had washers custom made for these fasteners that are the right size inside and out. Um, they're a grade, they're equivalent to a grade 12.9. Um, and they, they just, they're the bee's knees. They're exactly what these fasteners need in this application. The other thing we did is we applied a special coating to the outside of the fastener, um, and we did we did quite a bit of we we spent a lot of time. Well, I didn't spend a lot of time as much as the fastener spent a lot of time rusting um, <laughs> during you know we've spent probably the last six months doing very controlled corrosion tests on a lot of different plating types, a lot of different coating types, and we we picked one that looks the best and actually coincidentally provides the best. It really was a lot better. Protection. It's pretty shocking how much better it was. 
Well, and Todd and I were actually going back and forth because I thought a different kind of coating oh, he was, was going to offer better corrosion protection. I'm like, Todd, I know it's ugly, but we have to do this. So we did it. And we then, tried it. And then it turned out that the best looking one actually offered the best corrosion protection as well. Yes. So, um, Another yeah. thing, talk about the chamfer. I know you had to do a special machining on these washers. You have, these are directional. You have to put them on the right way. And why is that? So these, these washers are, these ones that we're launching the product with are directional. However, we're going to revise them. Next time we order a batch of these, we're gonna make them non-directional so that it's just easier for you guys but to install But there is them. a chamfer. But there is a chamfer and you have to pay attention to this. The chamfer right here needs to go against the head of the fastener. And the reason for that is that there's a radius where the shank of the fastener meets the head. And if you have the non, um, if you have the non-chamfered side facing that, it'll point load the head of the fastener and cause it to fail. So let's not do that. Let's make sure we're set up for success and get the chamfer on there the right way. So we did a bunch of testing on this, just like we did in those head studs. We built a head stud tester to test some import head studs to see if they're any good and they were just junk. And so we still had that set up. We tested the IFG head studs on that. And so I sent Tony, I said, Tony, test these bolts. Tell me how they compare to a stock bolt. Tell me how they compare to an ARP you know, the, the, the affordable one, the ARP2000, the ARP425, I mean, they're called both things. And uh, let's get some test data out there. So, I mean, you spent, what, two days cranking on bolts? Yeah, I, I basically tested it until the testing apparatus failed. Right. Um, I collected over a thousand data points, um, you know, all different permutations, you know, retorquing the same ones multiple times, torquing fresh ones, seeing how, I mean, it, it, yeah, there was a lot of... <laughs> There was a lot of different angles involved in that test. One of that was to, for one, one to create a torquing procedure. Mm -hmm. So we need to know what to do for the fasteners, and one, another is just to test it. So, give me the give me the numbers. How does this test compare to a stock bolt? How does this compare to an ARP, you know, uh, entry level bolt? So these are about, stud. so Sorry. these are about twenty five percent stronger than a factory uh, twelve valve head fastener. They're about ninety percent as strong as an ARP two thousand. Now these are a bolt, so there's some there's some differences in how bolts versus studs deal with stress. So saying it's 90% as strong as an ARP 2000 is kind of a misnomer because you've just got, material, but not necessarily the stud versus a bolt. Well, it's not really even material. It's just it has to deal with the force vectors and how you know how consistent. You know, mainly studs are better because they apply a more consistent clamp load just yeah. inherently. Yeah. Like if you were to make a stud version of this, they would be much more uniform in the overall clamping load because that's, you know, because you're not, you're not twisting down through something. Um, you're not applying a torsional stress to the entire fastener. But like I said, I ran these for a long time. I have recommended them to many friends. I've installed them on many friends' personal trucks. Um, I stand behind them. I know they work. And so the you have a stock bolt here. Mm -hmm. This is a the stock bolt's a 12.9. This is a 12.9. Why is this 25% stronger than that? So really why why I think that they're stronger is that the shank diameters are different. So the shank diameter on this one I'm coming up with 423. And on any one of these 465 and they vary a little bit but 465 so you've got an increase in sectional area there which is going to make the shank of the fastener which is a big deal when you're talking about you know five inches of shank here um, it's less elastic so they're going to it's basically the thing to keep in mind is everything is a spring so if you can make the spring stiffer you get more consistent torque, better clamping, that type of thing. This works better all the way around. Yeah. And then um, on these, one of the big headaches on the 12 valve guys is if you buy head studs, you've got to machine your rocker towers. Mm -hmm. That's $150 most places, some more, some less, but figure you buy head studs, you got to spend another $150 on machining your rocker towers. Did you have to do that with these on your no. trucks? So if if these are installed without washers on the rocker towers, which is fine because there's plenty of room mm -hmm. underneath, there's plenty of room underneath the head um, around the hole. 
um, to not point load anything, you don't need to machine your rockers with these. Um, in fact, I actually, what I did on my personal vehicle is I actually did run a washer, but um, you can just kind of knock the webbing out of the valve out of the valve covers mm -hmm. um, with a die grinder or something like that, and pick up enough clearance to run them. However, um, we tested we tested this on a couple different engines here, and we didn't see any ill effects from skipping the washer. And that way, they're just 100% bolt on, like drop in no fancy like you could do this on a saturday afternoon yeah. expecting to drive it to church sunday morning and not have any problems so um yeah that's that's what we that's what we like about these so we're really excited about this because it's super economical uh, we have these for the the 12 valve and 12 24 valve ep44 even common rail trucks mm -hmm. these will work really really well like i said again single turbo application if your goal is met with a single turbo 550, 600 horsepower and under, and a single turbo application, you can save a bunch of money right here. Uh, I mean, just just a lot. Um, I think we're gonna retail these for like 200 bucks for the whole set, I mean, with yeah. the custom washes and everything. Um, and so it's a really affordable way to do this. One thing we need to talk about is the torquing. We have a special tool, where is that? When you're installing these, what's the torque spec on these? 125 foot-pounds. About the same as the RP, 125 foot-pounds. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you guys are gonna have a version of this in your toolbox. This is like a little chrome socket with a, an Allen in it. Um, this one was broken installing these and we've kind of ground it down so we can have it still functional. This is not gonna cut it. And so we actually had a search and we found this thing here. We've torqued, I mean you use this for all of them, right? Like this thing's pretty awesome. I used one for um, something like a thousand torque cycles and it, okay wore the black oxide off, but. So if you don't have this, we're gonna offer, you can get, if you have this, it's just a 10 millimeter hex drive, nothing fancy, crazy, just this is an option that will get through the head studs. It'll, if you want, or head bolts, sorry, so you're saying head studs. <laughs> yeah. It'll get through the head bolts. Um, you can do it on your buddies, trucks, whatever. So if you don't have this, make sure you get this because you're gonna need it because chances are, if you're gonna do, do this on a Saturday afternoon, you're gonna break this halfway through um, and it's just not gonna work any good. So. Anyway, this is cool. This is exciting. This helps you guys save a bunch of money. 12 off guys especially can save a lot of cash because you don't have to do that rocker uh, modification. And even the 24 valve and common rail guys, this is a nice upgrade. Uh, very inexpensive, can be done in frame on an afternoon, no big deal. And uh, yeah, should be able to help your truck hold a little bit more power. So anyway, we have these available. Give us a call if you need them. If you have any questions on head bolts, head studs, we're happy to help you out. And uh, yeah, look for these on the website and they're ready to go. Anything else, Tony? Um, I just wanted to touch on a couple more points on this. I actually, I broke quite a few, you know, cheap import low quality sockets when I was going through this on my own vehicle. I actually ended up having to make one, uh, make a socket that was short enough to fit under the cowl and strong enough to actually torque all the, all the fasteners. Um, what I like about this one is a lot of your M10 um, sockets are gonna have a 3 8 drive. This one has a half inch drive. It's also one piece, so you don't have a loose fit to get into the works and possibly cause damage. Um, you know, a lot of them would actually, the Allen would strip inside the, the holder. Um, the other thing is this is an impact rated socket, so you know that it's, it, it'll take the abuse. Um, the ones that we're currently going to offer, they're a Blackhawk brand, which is um, a subsidiary of Proto. And those are, I mean, that's a gold standard in the tool world. So. Um, you know, yeah, this is, this is the best quality. Um, th basically this is the perfect socket that we could set you guys do. up with for the, for the specific application. So yeah, I get that. Comes with the lube. We're using the ARP lube. We've had a lot of great luck with that in the past. Mm -hmm. So no reason to reinvent the wheel there. So anyway, these should work great for you guys. So give us a call, let us know what you need, and we would love to help you out. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time on the parts bin.